Yo, Sleepy Sheepy here, and today we're going to be looking at perhaps my favorite build in the DLC so far, and that's going to be the Poisoned Hand. So this is the fist weapon that makes your hands kind of look like Frankenstein, which is great. These are phenomenal. They have an A scaling in Arcane, and they have 118 poison buildup. So you're going to be proccing poison pretty frequently with these, and you're going to take advantage of that with the Mushroom Crown Helm, as well as the Kindred Rot's Exaltation Talisman, which both boost your AR with the poison proc. So the fact that you're dealing uh, not regular poison but deadly poison which has a uh, shorter lifespan in terms of how long it's active but a faster accumulation of damage so the DPS is faster that means that you're going to be getting a lot of just kind of solid DPS while you're not doing anything um, but while you're aggressing with these we also have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, as well as Millicent's Prosthesis to boost your successive attacks, which you will get a lot of because uh, this is the same moveset as the Star Fist, and it's just really strong. So as you accumulate those hits, your AR will be boosted, but let's say you just kind of need a finishing move and you want to change things up a little bit, we have a Reverse Grip blade and this backhand blade is going to have the poison flower blooms twice ash of war on it which uh, is everything that poison moth flight isn't so it does the same thing in theory where if your opponent is poisoned it will remove the poison but in the process do a huge chunk of damage but where more poison moth flight was just like super telegraphed and hard to hit and just very lackluster in general and even the i guess the damage was kind of good but it wasn't amazing this comes out super fast it works as a uh, ballas punish because it has a ton of forward momentum and it also deals rot buildup so if you do it a few times you can get your opponent um, rotted in the process so yeah I love these two things together and then kind of the cherry on top is now we have the deadly poison perfume bottles so this moveset is actually better than I thought it would be there are ways to actually get some poise break so just using the heavy attacks are going to be your friend um, so you'll be able to get little bits of chip damage and poison build up that way uh, if you want to do it slowly but you have the option to hit the L2 button and just instantly proc poison so that's going to be deadly poison that you proc on both yourself and any one that walks into the cloud and you can see how big the cloud is like I'm pretty far away and I had to use two bolluses because it kept building up and that's going to massively boost your AR and that gives you the option to either go straight for the poison uh, flower bloom twice ash of war or you can just you know stick with the AR boost that you get and chase people down with these super high AR uh, fist weapons that just feel really good so yeah I, I'm super jazzed about this I've been waiting for a really strong poison build and now we have like a setup where every element of it complements each other really nicely and I'm just so happy that From Software finally did this because uh, if you know my channel at all like I'm a huge fan of poison builds and this just is, is so good so yeah um, this was a little bit of a longer intro because I wanted to kind of talk through the full process let's take a look at how we can put this all together in the showcase as always if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing I really would appreciate it but yeah let's take a look at our first invasion here We'll be starting things off in the tower settlement area, and here we're going to have a couple players that are just dealing with some PvE. We're going to go ahead and get buffed with our Physic and set up with our Perfume. So I really like starting off with the Perfume, going for that very early poison proc. You'd be amazed at how many people just walk into the cloud and then never heal the poison. So that's a really nice element of it. This player here with the hammer is going to be uh, kind of guilty of that, just letting the poison tick by. And I think a lot of people see poison and they just think, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, but because this is deadly poison and the damage per second is higher, like it can actually accumulate in a very meaningful way. And we're going to go ahead and back off into the PvE a little bit. Uh, this player is going Serpentine, which is hilarious because it doesn't work at all because uh, just this guy with a machete comes out of the corner, hits them once, and they get stunned, and then they get two-shotted by the rest of the PvE. So, uh, unfortunate moment there for that player, but we're going to go ahead and start aggressing the other two. Um, that was an incantation I hadn't seen before, so that blew me up, and I was not ready for it. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the self buff with the perfume, and we also get the host in the process. We actually end up walking into the cloud a second time on accident and get 
the deadly poison buildup on ourselves. So that is something you definitely need to be careful about. Um, the cloud is bigger than expected. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start aggressing this phantom here as they throw these giant spinning rings. They don't have enough HP to survive some light attacks with the poisoned hand. So we do manage to finish them off and just start aggressing on the host a little bit. Uh, we kind of want to back up. We finally don't have the extra like poison buildup that we never actually healed from earlier. I don't think I actually noticed in the moment, but now we're getting some R2s. We very quickly proc deadly poison with the poisoned hand, and then we swap over to our Ash of War and get the finish. So yeah, that just deleted half their health uh, because they didn't have the correct roll timing. And it, I don't know, landing that Ash of War as a finisher just feels so good. Like, it, <laughs> it's so satisfying. Um, next up, we're gonna be in a very similar place with a different group of people. And I was really happy about this one because I was using the perfume and actually managed to get a kill with it. So just, you know, we obviously had some help from the PVE in the area, but that extra poison buildup, you know, it procced on that player. And then before they could even get their heal off, um, they succumbed to the poison. So we love to see it. Um, we also are just kind of testing out the moveset. Like I don't think poison uh, is a lost cause as a, a weapon class on the perfume bottles. I know that there are some pretty crazy things you can do with the other perfumes, but uh, as, a, as a poison enjoyer myself, I did want to give the perfume bottles a, a fair chance, you know, uh, not just stick to one of these new weapons and just kind of incorporate something that I feel like maybe people will not appreciate as much as I will. So uh, here we get the true combo that happens when you throw a sleep pot and have star fists or the poison hand, which means, uh, you know, you get them slept and and then you go for one R2 and a follow-up R2. So a big shout out to Rust Bucket, who has kind of been popularizing true combos like that. You should check out his channel if you like nerdy things about PvP and just learning about frame data and stuff. Uh, he's a super valuable resource to the community. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and get our poison off. We are now self procced so we need to heal that. And we can begin chasing after this host here. And they go for a no Ash of War <laughs> Redon Sword uh, moment, which is unfortunate, but it does set them up for a backstab for us, which we don't mind, and we get the uh, backhand blade backstab, which is an animation I thoroughly enjoy. So <laughs> we start this 3v1 out with a heavy attack with a poison. We were hoping to poise break, but uh, not so much. We did get a nice bit of poison buildup in the process, but we need to back off. Uh, this is just not a good area to be dealing with these players. We go for the L2 with the perfume and get a lot of deadly poison in the mix for these opponents. Um, it's worth noting that I keep the poison bolluses in my soft swap bar because I know I'm going to be self procking fairly frequently. Uh, I recommend you keep them somewhere nearby as well just because it's very likely to happen with I, I think I think it's just guaranteed to happen if you use the L2 on the perfume bottle. So uh, that's kind of an interesting design decision, but I'm, I'm all for it. And here we end up sleeping this player and getting a few quick hits in. And honestly, like, if you have really aggro a group of three, just throwing a sleep pot at your feet can be such a difference maker for how the invasion goes. So it just relieves some of the pressure and massively punishes everyone in the group if they're all just going to continue to bum rush you. So we need to back off a little bit as this player is going for Swift Slash, which is uh, probably one of the most broken Ashes of War in the DLC. So we're going to be pretty careful here. We managed to knock them out of a couple of their attacks and they just have too little too late. Um, and in the same moment, the host does die off on their own. So now we're we're focusing on this phantom who um, forgot that invaders start with iframes, uh, which was unfortunate. And we see the parry shield coming out from the player here. Uh, they also have an offhand music record, so we just know that they're going for parries. So uh, we, you know, kind of predict when they are going to go for a parry and then manage to grab the backstab, followed up with an R2. We do try to land the Ash of War here on the backhand blade, and you can see there that actually the player was able to roll the damage, and so in the process they got the poison removed and didn't take any of the burst damage. So that is one kind of downside of using that Ash of War, but uh, I would say it's so fun that it's worth it. Um, and then we actually got the finish with the perfume bottle. So that was pretty funny. It was kind of like a parry this moment as uh, our opponent was trying to parry perfume, which uh, does not work. So <laughs> next up we have a group of three. We have a blue here and a host and a co. And we're pretty much alone with the phantom here. And then we have the vulgar, vulgar militia just helping us 
without throwing all the poison in the world and giving us a little AR buff in the process. So that was really nice to see. Um, that blue kind of had no chance, like they were definitely going to get uh, get poisoned in that situation, as did I, but you know, I kind of, you know, am happy to see that happen, honestly, with this build because the AR boost is absolutely worth it. Uh, so next up we have these two players that were kind of trying to weave in and out of find the right opening to get some damage off, maybe proc poison, and yeah, I, I just feel like this build is really fun because it starts out kind of innocuous, like people see you're running poison perfume and they're like, is this player kidding? Like, is this a joke? And then the poison procs, and then you start throwing hands, and then you, you know, have a giant needle come out of your feet and they get stabbed and blown up, and it's, it's it's just it's, it's so fun um so <laughs> yeah like it, it the the build builds as you play it and it goes from kind of like something that players might not be concerned about to like oh my god i need to respect this and i i just feel like that's a cool kind of mental component of a build um but yeah uh, as the player learned that they needed to respect it they decided to disconnect um after we killed the phantom so uh yeah they didn't want to have anything to do with my poison build which was a bummer but you know it's their game they can play how they want um and we <laughs> can move on to the next one here so this is a 2v1 and we have power stance great katanas from the side of the host and then colossal sword from the phantom here and we do have the phantom poison so we're seeing if we can land our uh, ash of war on the backhand blades but it's it's not really happening so we're going to switch back to just the high ar that you get with the poisoned hand we're trying to dodge these jump attacks and here as this phantom tries to make space to get off their um kind of residual health over time incantation they're not able to and like the the idea was definitely there like it's a good way to counter poison if you get a little bit of uh, HP back over time, but uh, honestly it was too little too late, and we also do manage to get the poison proc with the perfume on the host and follow it up with our favorite Ash of War now, so that's pretty nice. Um, this is an instance where I just kind of walked up, go for the L2 on the perfume bottles, and uh, you know, I do have time to heal my own poison, and we get two players poisoned, so uh, it counts as a victory to me, and we do get hit with the Grail's Roar. I don't know the timing of that <laughs> roll, and I don't know if I ever will. It's unfortunate. And here we can just see what happens when uh, a player lets too many hits accumulate and we've got poison to proc. Like, the damage just builds so fast. Um, obviously they didn't have a ton of HP either, but 1100 damage in like under two seconds is substantial. So we see a lot of magma on the floor. We're going to back off, just, you know, try to find openings, not run into it, not get too greedy. Um, we were hoping to trade with the Twin Blade, which I think you can do quite well if you go for R2 twice. And, you know, even if you get hit once, the R2 comes out really, really fast. But because we were getting stunned from behind from the host, uh, it's not really working out. Here we get a lot of damage off, but the host is doing a good job of covering the Phantom here, and we get knocked out of the air a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if we just missed that Ash of War or if because we got hit earlier... Um, it just kind of didn't work out or didn't have the same range but here we do get a jumping attack followed up by a light attack on the phantom here and we can focus on the player with the great katana and <laughs> they just start emoting at us uh, they may be kind of giving up but they're still rolling so it's not clear um, they're also light rolling so this is going to be a great opportunity to use the backhand blade just because it's so good at catching light rollers so uh, we go for our ash war just to see if we can make it happen it's not really working but honestly the way to go is is to just go for a running heavy or a two-handed running light and we do manage to come out with the victory again so um <laughs> moving on we have a group of three here and we think they're going to progress up the stairs so we go ahead and apply that l2 poison cloud and we get two players poisoned so uh, yeah it just is quite effective um and i think this is I don't know the synergy between all three of these weapons just feels so nice and it's just like it's all new dlc stuff and it's, it's just great so um <laughs> we're gonna roll back a little bit and uh, try to avoid you know just taking all the damage at once we have some chip damage in return uh, you know they see our poison raise us a bunch of throwing daggers type situation um 
everybody does now no longer have poison I believe it healed uh, rather than them healing it just kind of wore off um, is what I mean to say and we're gonna need to back up a little bit here it wouldn't be a bad spot to go for the L2 but it, we don't really feel like we have enough distance we, we know that they're gonna aggress but we need more distance is kind of what I'm thinking um, and then here me and the PvE work together to finish off that player um, we start aggressing this player with very low HP as well um, the host is doing some funny things uh, it's not really recommended to do that and the PvE does finish off that phantom too so uh, that guy was definitely a helpful member of this invasion and we can begin going after the host here with Moog's Great Spear so uh, we do need to respect that a little bit more than we're going to uh, we're not going to run in during the L2 but we just really want to get off uh, multi hits with our uh, poisoned hand so we're going for maybe like more running r2s and heavy attacks than we should be we do get a nice neutral jump that does quite a bit of damage but uh here we're, we're just too aggressive um, and get a little bit punished for it but we also kind of feel like it's over and as they go for a second light attack we do manage to just roll in and get the backstab um that was enough to finish them i don't know why i clipped it a little bit early so sorry about that i know that's slightly unsatisfying uh but yeah i, I guarantee you that that was the end of the invasion properly. Um, here we get everybody poisoned and heal our own poison. Um, we have a player using the lady, so we're going to be a little bit worried about this. And then here, this blue standing on top of the table, uh, it just has such a high IQ play um, where you can only get on to, uh, to that from the front, and then they just go up there and start shooting arrows. So my feeble attempts to jump up there and hit them with the starfish, or the <laughs> not starfish, I'm so used to seeing that moveset, the um, poisoned hand, just like. It's, it's completely futile. So we need to leave this room. This is a bad place to be. We're not happy. Uh, we're you know covered in arrows at this point. We're frostbitten. Uh, things are just not going well. Um, and now that we've invaded this area a few times, we do know where the stairs are to get out. So we can progress through the level a little bit and get some PvE involved, um, take a bit of a breather, and now begin just kind of uh, running down these opponents and seeing if we can get the light rolling player. Um, yeah, the, the player with the bow is, is actually a blue. They're wearing a, like a trick mirror, so uh, maybe I should have made that clearer earlier, but yeah, they're, they're kind of our focus right now. Um, so when I see a light roller now, I pull out a reverse grip um, sword. The, the reverse grip cur curve swords are just uh, so nice, um, and we'll see it here in this moment when we go for just a running light attack and catch them for both swings, and then we, we just completely keep pace with them and just chase them down so effectively. Um, and actually, <laughs> if you'll notice, this was the group of two that also had a blue in their world um, that disconnected from me earlier. So um, we'll, we'll just kind of keep that in mind as we progress here. So we, they begin fighting the PvE. Uh, they do a good job of actually finishing it off. This player with the Power Stance Light Greatswords uh, falls pretty fast as we have a little bit of time alone with them. This player with the Rune Arc and the Colossal Sword. Um, somebody we need to be worried about. They haven't quite taken care of the PvE, even though they got the repost earlier. And here uh, they go for the tried and true disconnect. <laughs> and yeah, we can move on to the dual portion of the showcase. All right, so our first opponent here is going to be running a light greatsword, and we're going to, you know, pull out the tried and true perfume bottles. Uh, we're going to actually get some decent poise breaks here, so we can see with a jumping attack we're able to break their poise uh, without much effort, and, you know, we're consistently playing keep out against them while getting some buildup of poison in the process, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we do that a number of times until we get hit, and then we switch over to the star of the show, the poisoned hand, and we just grab a couple running light attacks and they're very much on their back foot. Um, they're using a similar Ash of War to ours, the Poison Flower Blooms Twice Ash of War is what we've got on right now, and what we're going for is just that <laughs> sweet sweet L2 that will uh, kind of delete their HP bar as it removes the poison. So here we finally get it, and yeah, it, obviously they didn't have much HP left, but it just feels great as a finisher, and we're going to continue to apply that process as we go through the rest of these duels. So. Next up we have a player here that is actually Moira Rose from The Crows Have Eyes 2, the Croanine. So uh, that was pretty cool to see in the arena. I didn't know she played Elden Ring, but yeah, it's just great to see. Um, so they're going to be throwing a lot of these daggers here, and we're rolling most of them. We don't know the timing per se, 
but we can you know kind of understand based on just telegraphing the movements um, they are getting a decent amount of build up here so we need to switch over to the poison hand and kind of get this party started and get moving um, we also have a lot of blood loss build up that we need to deal with and they hit us with what i imagine is their l2 for this and we're gonna need to you know <laughs> really just roll everything because this is like fan daggers but way scarier uh, but it is themed so we go ahead and land a jumping heavy which does a lot of damage and then here we're able to actually follow it up with our favorite ash of war now the poison flower blooms twice and uh, come out with the victory so next up we have a player that's emoting a little bit and then pulling out the backhand blades and they're going to be using the blind spot ash of war quite a bit we go for a fully charged heavy with our perfume bottles and uh, get a poise break in and we're lagging behind on HP but that's kind of how duels go with this setup because you're spending the first bit of your HP just trying to get an accumulation of poison built up and then as you pull out the poisoned hand you can go ahead and just start uh, kind of wailing on people with massive AR so you can see that heavy attack did quite a bit of damage there now on their back foot and we get the finish with the poison flower blooms twice so Really, we need an acronym for that Ash of War. But moving on, we are able to go after this player with the Great Katana. And uh, they do have a parry shield in their offhand, which isn't going to help against poison uh, through the perfume bottles, but it is uh, probably pretty good against fists. So it's actually kind of nice that we used perfume for long enough that they swapped it off. And then here they go for their Ash of War, which sets up a nice backstab for us. And then we're able to cut through their Ash of War with our own. Uh, it's kind of cool to see both of those going into each other but ours is going to out damage them since our opponent was poisoned um, next up we have a player running a colossal sword and we're going to also use crab just because their damage is quite significant and uh, we'll start things off kind of bravely with the perfume bottles um, we go for a running heavy attack and get hit by the ghost flame ignition ash of war um, and go throw out a few more of the uh, perfume and you know do manage to actually roll away from this ash of war they're poisoned now and and we don't land the kind of burst damage that we're hoping for on the first one so we go for a second one on the uh, backhand blades and then swap over to the poisoned hand and just deliver the final blows we need to finish off our opponent uh, next up we have a player uh, running I believe either claws or fists um, I have not used this weapon yet but um, it's still very cool to see and we're just gonna try to do our best here so we go ahead and throw out a random heavy attack with the perfume and they actually switch over to perfume as well so I felt a little dishonest in the process of this just uh, I did switch away from a perfume at some point but they do have the AR advantage on the fact that they have lightning perfume rather than uh, poison perfume and they also have an option <laughs> available to them that I did not know about at the time. So we get them nice and poisoned and pull out our uh, weapon here and then we go for our Ash of War and then they just pocket nuke us with their Ash of War and um, yeah we get the victory in some way but that was definitely a tie in my mind. So moving on we have a player using a thrusting shield and we're gonna need to play this carefully these are always uh, a bit scary. We go for a jumping attack and roll some of their hits but we do take a decent amount of damage in the process and now we're way behind on damage so we really need to make something happen. We land a uh, running heavy. Um, we're still trading into them and here they go for a bolus which they kind of needed to do and we're actually able to punish that with a running attack so that's going to conclude the showcase for this build i really hope you give it a try i hope you enjoyed this um, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing i would appreciate it but yeah thanks so much for watching and take care